I have been playing on the impossible starter map that makes your main farm tiny and I am trying to complete the community center. If you haven't watched Spring, make sure to check out my first video and if you enjoyed the series, consider subscribing for more. The first day of summer started with completing the summer foraging bundle and of course some fishing in the mountain lake. I also reached level 105 in the mines. The next day, I did my usual morning routine taking care of my crops and animals and bought a coop at Robin's. I chose pretty much the only location that was available on my farm and donated the last fish to the lake fish bundle. I collected a rainbow shell on the right side of the farm, and I don't know if I'm the only one, but I always think that the rainbow shells are part of the community center because it feels so special to collect them. Day 31 I went to the secret forest, collected lots of fiddlehead fern and stayed to catch a wood skip, along with a chest that had an artifact I still needed. The wood skip was of course immediately donated. I caught some ocean fish and crafted some tappers on day 32. Collecting wood for the farm buildings without access to all the trees on my farm turned out to be really annoying, so I wanted to get a head start on wood collection for the future. I bought two chicken for my newly built coop and went straight back to my farm to give them some love. Since I couldn't reach my fishing traps anymore, I had to move my buildings at Robin's, so I moved the shipping box out of the way and figured out a different spot for my coop. There was exactly one spot that wouldn't block any farming space and still give me access to both the bridge and the fruit bat cave. The only thing I would have to move was the right chest in front of my house. Since some of day 34 footage was lost, here's me placing some tree saplings. It probably started the same way day 35 did though, taking care of my animals. I reached level 110 in the mines and got one of my favorite swords. I just think it looks really cool. Shortly after I reached the bottom of the mines, earning myself the skull key. A crow welcomed me on day 36. Now that I had a whopping 16 farm tiles on my farm, even I apparently wasn't safe from them. I thought about crafting a scarecrow, but since my space was too valuable, I decided I would just keep my 15 farming spots for now. I went to Pierre's to buy some community center seeds and wanted to buy some hay at Marnie's. She wasn't at her shop though, so I gave her a disappointing salmon berry instead and ended my day with some late night fishing. I woke up to an upgraded house the next day and rearranged some of my furniture. I went out in the rain to apparently catch mostly algae in the town river, before I finally hooked a shad for the community center. I cooked some maki rolls and a fried egg in my newly built kitchen on day 37, and later that day embarrassingly died to red slime in the mines. And of course I had to lose the most valuable thing in my inventory, the glass shards I still had to donate to the museum. I let Marlon retrieve my sword anyways in hopes of finding some broken glass in the future. To lift my spirits, I completed the ocean fish bundle, collected the beach totems and reached level 8 fishing. On day 38, I collected every last tree in the valley, but it was still not enough to upgrade my barn, so I bought the wood I needed at Robin's and gave into the power she had over me right now. I finished my farming task on the morning of day 39 and caught my first rainbow trout before attending the luau on the beach. I sadly forgot to bring something poisonous to season the soup with, so I had to go with a silver star pike. The starter gods apparently were very happy about that since my cow produced some large milk for the first time the next morning, and my tree in the top half was already producing some pine tar, which I could both donate to the community center. Recovery for the forest was not an option though, so I cut down some trees and planted the saplings in my own farm. The traveling cart had a sandfish, which I bought, and ended my day with some living hat hunting in the mines. A rainy day 41 started collecting some fully grown melons that I replaced with some mixed seeds and I also filled the upgraded barn with some hay. I went to the mines to collect some stone to make up for buying all the wood at Robin's. I donated an aquamarine to Emily's dye bundle, some oak resin to the enchanter's bundle, and also donated one of the melons I had collected earlier. Ending my day leveling up farming and mining. I bought some more melon seeds at Pierre's the next day, took care of my tree farm, and since patience isn't one of my strengths, I spent some more money at Robin's for wood, so I could upgrade my coop. I realized I missed Alex's birthday, which I immediately forgot about when seeing an ancient seed at the traveling cart. And even though I didn't have any farming space that I could plant it in, I just couldn't leave it there. I also bought some honey and found a double pomegranate in my bat cave, which gave me level 7 foraging. Day 43 was mostly fishing and finding treasure which I brought to Clint's to open up. I donated the missing rocks and gems to the museum as well. I went to the mines on day 44 to collect some more stone, and while I was at it I made sure to cut down all of the fiber, since I haven't given up on finding that stupid grass hat yet. I brought a farm warp totem to the ocean to fish there as long as possible and still make it home. 
Most of day 45 was spent in the mines. And since I didn't have lots left to do, I spent my evening in the saloon socializing and working on some friendship points with the villagers. Since my farm buildings were both upgraded now, I bought both a goat and a duck, which is definitely my favorite farm animal in the game. I also found a huge amount of fiddlehead fern in the secret forest, and wondered if these stacked the same way regular forageables did, or if I was just lucky to find that many. I started the next day buying my last barn upgrade, which I of course couldn't without buying some wood first. I was really determined to collect as much wood as possible for my deluxe coop, so I spent my entire energy on cutting down trees on day 48. The next day I had a few new crops to donate and I could finish the summer crops bundle earning myself a quality sprinkler. I also finished the exotic foraging bundle with some oak resin. I forgot how expensive pigs were and was just short of buying one, so I went to the traveling cart instead and it had a red cabbage seed. Sadly, the summer days weren't going to be enough to grow it this season. In any other run, this would still be amazing, because there was still the option of planting it in the greenhouse. But since leveling my farming was taking so long, getting the quality crops to unlock the greenhouse was going to need a lot of luck. Speaking about farming, I did reach level 4 at the end of the day. I went to the mines to ignore my farming problems on day 50 and collected some stone. I donated some bones I found to the museum and crafted the ancient seed artifact I found into some plantable seeds. Reaching level 5 combat, I chose the fighter occupation. Most of the time my pick in the combat levels is completely random, so let me know what you usually go with. Day 51 I collected my first duck egg and probably donated it to the community center, but I sadly don't have the footage to prove it, because my recording cuts off at 7am. I did for sure donate some weed to the fodder's bundle on day 52, went fiber hat hunting in the mines and gave Demetrius a melon for his quest. While I was there, I bought some wood and built my final farm building upgrade, the deluxe coop. The next day I bought an apple tree and some corn and waited for Clint to leave his workspace so I could give him some copper he had requested. After his thorough inspection, I smelted most of it at home into copper bars. I bought a coconut on day 54, not realizing I had already completed the exotic foraging bundle, and thought about buying a rabbit at Marnie's, but since there was still a lot of time left for it to grow, I bought some hay instead. I went fishing in the town lake and stared at my arc nemesis bundle for some motivation before calling it a day. I collected some ocean forageables the next morning and tried catching the legendary fish on the ocean pier, but since fishing wasn't my focus up till now and I didn't have a speciality bobber, it was just way too strong for now. I went to the mines to catch a ghost fish instead and went back home to reach level 8 foraging and level 9 fishing. On the last day of summer, I moved the shipping bin away from the center of my farm because the sound of it opening every time I pass it was driving me crazy at this point. I caught some fish in town and waited for the beach to open up so I could attend everyone's favorite festival. I bought my favorite banner of the game to treat myself, and after a busy and productive summer, I de-stressed on the pier, watching the moonlight jellyfish dance in front of me. And that's it for summer year one. Thank you so much for watching, and if you've enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. I will have fall uploaded very, very soon.